Hello and welcome. My name is Jason Murray and in this video I'm going to cover the installation of SAN certificates in your Unified Communications Manager cluster. Certificates aren't something new but the supported way of installing them is and that's what I'll be concentrating on in this video. So let's first talk about the steps you need to accomplish in order to install a signed certificate on a Unified Communications Manager server. All right, so there's four steps to installing a certificate. Uh, the first step you're going to do is you're going to get on the communications manager server or whatever server you're on and generate a certificate signing request or a CSR. Once you have that generated, it, you're going to download that and then you're going to send that to your certificate authority, step two. And they're going to sign it. Um, using their system. Uh, in, this, in this particular video we're going to use the Microsoft certificate services on our Active Directory server that we have and we're going to sign it ourselves. But you know, if you wanted a publicly signed certificate you would send it to somebody like a GoDaddy or whatever and have them sign it and what they're going to do is they're going to sign it and they're going to send you back an identity certificate basically the, the cert that's signed and they're going to send you the CA certificate which is the uh, basically the root certificate so you can um, do step four and you're going to take both of those and upload um, upload that to your server the identity certificate or the sign cert and the CA certificate or the root cert you're going to upload that to each individual uh, server um, for each service so you've got many services on uh, let's say communications manager you've got like Tomcat uh, call manager and etc you have to do that for each service now before 10.5.1, we're going to talk about that in the next slide, but before 10.5.1, you'd have to do it for each service for every single server. So you had a publisher and you've got multiple subscribers, including you know, I'm in present servers that are considered part of the cluster. You have to go to each individual server and do the same four steps for every service that you want to have you know, the certificate signed for. So if you have Tomcat, which is basically on all the servers, you have to go to the Tomcat service on Communications Manager Publisher, do the same, generate CSR, have it signed, upload the root cert against that Tomcat service, and then you would go into the next one. So go to your subscriber, do the same thing. Go to the next subscriber, do the same thing. I'm in presence, do the same thing. I'm in presence subscriber, do that. So it could take a good amount of time to just certify and you know get signed certificates on every server in your cluster. So with 10.5.1 they introduced uh, the support for multi-server certificates or SAN certificates and that's what we're going to talk about. All right, so let's talk about multi-server certificates. Um, on certificates, there's a section called subject alternate names, and this contains either fully qualified domain names uh, or domain names themselves or other approved names. So when you're doing multi-server certificates on UC, this is where we're going to kind of modify in order to push this out. So you have one certificate with multiple FQDNs or fully qualified domain names and that's kind of how this works. So uh, each server itself will have to be configured for a FQDN um, fully qualified domain name and then that way it'll propagate into that subject alternate name section so you can have that signed by your certificate authority. Now, this is something that's been around, you know, SAN certificates and all that has been around for a while, uh, but just now supported in 10.5.1 and above in uh, a UC cluster. So what that means to you is you have one single uh, CSR. It's, you know, you take that one CSR with the multiple FQDNs in it. You have that signed. You take that root certificate and that signed CSR and you upload it per each service on one server and then what happens is let's say the Tomcat service you're you're doing the certificate for will be propagated to each server in the cluster so every subscriber every I'm in presence server that you have in your UC cluster your Unified Communications Manager cluster will get propagated out using the platform administrative web service API the service that runs on Communications Manager so as long as that's running that will be propagated out and it is running by default on your uh, communications manager servers and I'm present servers as well so what services are supported for this uh, you know being able to put the subject alternative names there is the Tomcat service and call manager service and Tomcat's on all servers 
call managers on specific call manager servers, and then you've got the two cup services that run on your I'm a presence server. So your your publisher, your subscriber, pub, uh, I'm a presence servers. So those are the ones that support this um, way of doing certificates. If you want a little bit more information, you can click on that link or not click on the link, but actually you know type it out, put it in the put it in there, and that goes to the release notes of the 1051 version, and it will talk all about the uh, way multi-server certificates can be handled. All right, so we're going to take care of the Tomcat service in this particular cluster, and then you can apply this to every other service that we do here. So first thing we got to make sure that we do before we start generating the CSRs is make sure that our communications manager, all our servers, have the FQDNs configured for it. So we're going to go to the CM administration page to do that. Um, in our cluster here, I've actually got them all configured, but I want to show you where it's at. So you're going to go into system and server. We're going to click find, and this is where it's going to list every server in our cluster. And you can tell we've already got the FQDNs already configured, but if you wanted to configure them, you would click on the name or IP address or whatever is configured here and click on it, and you could change it in this box here. So put the FQDN and then click save. So you'd want to do that for each and every server that you have in the cluster um, to make sure that we're ready to go to do the certificates. So now that we have that those configurations done, FQDNs are good to go, set up on all of our servers. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and generate a CSR for our cluster. So we're going to go to the OS administration page. Again, we're going to have to log in. And once we get logged in to this particular page, we're going to go to security and then certificate management. Alright, so once this page comes up, we're going to go ahead and generate a CSR. So we're going to click on the Generate CSR button here. There's one at the top you can also click on, but we're going to set the parameters of our request. So we've got the Tomcat service is what we're going to deal with, but you have multiple that you can do. You also have a distribution line. This is where we're going to do the multi-SAN. So right now it's only distributing for this particular server, the publisher. If we change this to the multi-server SAN, you can see that there's a subject alternate name section that I was talking about earlier. It auto-populates for every server that's in your cluster. So all the FQDNs that you set are going to show up now in this SAN section. You don't have to put those in. You can add more to it if you want, if you had other, other servers that aren't connected yet. But you could do this once and, and add them manually, or it auto-populates if you already have the server in your cluster. There's also different key links you can do, 1024, 248, 2048, SHA-1, SHA-256. This is more or less, you know, the, the harder the encryption is to crack. So, you know, FIPS compliant, 2048, SHA-256, so you can be uh, FIPS compliant. So we're going to go ahead and click Generate, and this is going to generate a request for us to download to send to our certificate authority. All right, so our request has been generated, and it tells you that the CSR is successful and it applies to these particular nodes with these FQDNs, which is what we want. So we'll go ahead and close that out, and as you'll see here, a new button appears, the Download CSR button. That allows you to download all your CSRs that you generated. As of now, we only have the one Tomcat CSR that we generated. If you had multiple that you did, it would show up in this list, but we're just going to be concerned about the Tomcat. So we're going to click Download. Uh, and then we're going to say save file and save it to our desktop. Alright, so now that's downloaded, we're going to go ahead and click close. And then let's go ahead and look at that certificate. So we've got this Tomcat CSR. We're going to use this. It, it's in Notepad right now. It opens up in Notepad. If it doesn't, you can set that. But let's open it up. We're going to select all the contents here because we're going to use this when we generate our certificate or sign certificate. Copy it out. And then we'll use that here in just a second. So what we're doing we're using Microsoft Active Directory Certificate Services to do our signing. If you don't have this or you want a publicly, you know, publicly trusted server doing this, you would send this to like a GoDaddy or whatever and they would do all this for you. But since we're doing our own signing, we can use this. And this is not automatically on your Active Directory server. You have to set this up. So we're going to use that to do our signing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the root certificate because this is the guy we trust. We're going to, we're going to need its root certificate. So to do that, we're going to click on Download CA Certificate. This is our uh, CA certificate here. We're going to choose the base 64. 
and then we're going to click download CA certificate. We're going to save it to our desktop and let's go ahead and go to that particular file and rename it. We're going to rename it so we know what this is because we'll download another one here in a little bit. We want to keep track of them. So once we have that in place we can click on home and now we're going to assign our CSRs that we, that we generated just a second ago. So we're going to click request certificate use advanced certificate request and then we're going to paste that information we copied earlier in there and then for our template we're going to use the web server template and then uh, we'll click submit so click on submit and then once that's done it gives you some links so you can download the actual certificate that's signed we'll click on base 64 since we chose that earlier click download certificate and click save file and that will save that into our uh, folder that we have set up on our desktop for these certificates so as you can see we got the root certificate here we got the Tomcat CSR and now we've got the new one that's signed so we're going to name this Tomcat because this is the signed one now that's renamed we're going to go ahead and upload these two certs to our Tomcat service on communications manager so let's go ahead and bring that back up pop over to certificate services and click upload now we've got the certificate purpose first one we're going to choose is the tomcat trust this is the one we're going to apply our root certificate to so our ad server that signed it or whatever public authority that has assigned it this is the one you want to upload toward the trust purpose so we're going to click browse and we're going to pick our root certificate from our certificate folders that we set, saved it to. So we've got that in there and we're going to click upload. Alright, so now we've got the root cert uploaded toward the Tomcat Trust and now we need to upload the signed CSR. So you see after we do this upload we're going to do this uh, util service restart and we'll do that here in a little bit. But we're going to choose Tomcat now because this is our signed Tomcat certificate that we did on the AD server. So that's good there. We're going to click browse. We're going to choose our signed certificate and we're going to upload. And then you can see now that it says that uh, it's complete on all these nodes. So all the FQDNs we had in there. And it also tells you again to restart the Tomcat service on all these services, all these uh, subscribers or I'm in present server. So it tells you again to, to restart. So let's check our subscriber server. You see them subscriber go to the OS administration page on the subscriber and log in once we log in here we'll be able to go to the certificate management section let's click on that and then once we get here we'll click find and then scroll down to let's see the bottom of the page here we should see it there we go we got the tr Tomcat trust certificates and we can tell that they have been assigned by our signing authority which is our AD server so that looks good let's go ahead and look at our I am in present server as well to make sure that the server certificates populated to that as well go to the OS administration page and then we'll log in once more to this page and now we'll go back to security and then we'll check out the certificate management section we'll click find as well in here and then we will, should see our Tomcat Trust Tomcat and Tomcat Trust and those did populate over so if we click on this particular link we'll be able to full, pull up the details of this certificate and if you scroll down the list we'll be able to find that section with the alternate names and you can see our domain and then all the FQDNs of all the servers in the cluster which will cover us on all those servers right there alright so we can go ahead and close this out and now because this I'm in presence also take note that you'll need to do a certificate and signing and all that for the XMPP trust and the XMPP um, service on the I'm in presence server that's not on communications manager so you have to do that separately just like you did the Tomcat for all the rest of the servers so last thing we're gonna do is actually restart the service remember it said restart Cisco Tomcat servers so we're gonna go ahead and do that now alright so we're gonna bring up putty 
our SSH client and we're going to go to the publisher first let's go ahead and restart that we'll log in as the OS administration account put the password in Oh, put the wrong password in let's go ahead and do that again and all right now we got the right password we'll log in we'll paste in the command util services restart Cisco Tomcat we copied that earlier and we'll paste it in now it's gonna go a little bit faster um, because I'm cutting some things out but we'll go ahead and do the restart the subscriber as well, we'll go ahead and do that guy we'll put the administrator account in and then the password again hopefully I put it in right and no I didn't so we'll go ahead and put it in one more time and we got it right this time so we'll go ahead and restart the Tomcat service on the subscriber as well put that same command in click restart again it's gonna move a little faster on the video than it does in real life because I'm cutting some time out but uh, very quickly with editing, editing um, it has been restarted. Don't forget to restart the Tomcat service as well on the I'm in Presence server. So, with that, that's pretty much it. So, pretty simple stuff, right? So, no longer do you have to do install server after server after server and put certificates on every individual server. Now, it makes it completely easy with 10.5.1 and above to be able to push out certificates for one service to all your cluster servers so this is definitely a huge time saver so hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully you learned something that you could take and uh, do in your own cluster so appreciate you watching and as always thanks for choosing Cisco